do. When replacing either one, be sure to use identical replacements to ensure reliable operation. O6CC compound cooling compressors use a combination of valve plates. The 50 to 99 CFM valve plates are shown here. The high stage valve plates have high and low crossover ports which are the standard air conditioning valve plates. The low stage valve plates have a pressure relief valve but do not have crossover ports. The top bank valve plates use a plug in place of the pressure relief and do not have crossover ports. Identify the valve plates as you disassemble them. Do not interchange high stage valve plates with low stage valve plates or mix the low stage valve plates. In the field you'll find cylinder head gaskets made of either neoprene fiber or neoprene coated steel. The coated steel gaskets replace the fiber gaskets. Either can be used although the coated steel gasket is preferred and stocked. The cylinder head gasket shown at the top left is for use with standard side bank non-unloading cylinder heads. The gasket at the bottom must be used on the center head of six cylinder models and when cylinder bypass type unloader heads are used on side banks. These gaskets allow the center rib to be anchored to the tapped hole in the high efficiency valve plate and are identified by a double tab on the left side. The anchoring tab in the center rib positions the center web during assembly and helps to prevent the gasket from blowing out due to liquid slugging. This gasket is provided in all O6E valve plate and valve plate gasket packages. It may be modified to be used with any standard non-unloading cylinder head or can be used as is on cylinder bypass type unloader heads. For example, any unloader style gasket can be cut with tin snips as shown at A to become a standard style head gasket. The gasket segment shown at A is needed to seal the crossover port in the center head. The extra hole at the bottom of the gasket, which in normal use directs discharge pressure to the capacity control valve, will have no effect when you use the gasket on a standard or center head. This is the special cylinder head gasket that's designed for use with suction cutoff on loader heads. Valve plate removal and replacement. To this point you've seen the different types of valve plates and gaskets used in O6D and O6E compressors. Now we'll cover the proper procedure for removing and replacing these components. To remove the cylinder heads, lock and tag the disconnect. Isolate the compressor from the rest of the system by shutting off the suction and discharge service valves and then recover all refrigerant in the compressor using appropriate and safe procedures. When the compressor reaches atmospheric pressure, loosen the cylinder head bolts, leaving at least two of them loosely in place so that the threads are still threaded into the crankcase. This will prevent the head from flying off and causing personal injury if there is still pressure trapped inside the head. It will also prevent the head from falling off the compressor. With two head bolts still loosely installed, a sharp blow with a good sized hammer directly on top of the head will usually break it loose. Do not tap the head sideways because this will break the dowel pins that position the suction valves and valve plate. After the seal is broken, the bolts and cylinder head may be safely removed. Once the cylinder head is off, the valve of 400 PSI, plus or minus 10% between discharge and suction pressure. On six-cylinder O6Es and O6CCs, the relief valve is in the center bank as shown here. A leaking relief valve could cause the compressor to overheat and should be replaced. This will be covered later in the troubleshooting section. The location of the relief valve on the four-cylinder O6E compressor is under the discharge service valve. Electrical terminal arrangements. Now we'll discuss the various electrical terminal arrangements so that you will be able to properly replace terminal plates. Recent five and six pin terminal plate assemblies have an improved plastic insulator a new terminal bolt and terminal block complete the design change. 
The five-pin terminal is for across-the-line start motors only. Terminals 1, 2, and 3 are power leads. 8 and 9 are for the internal thermostat. You can substitute a six-pin terminal plate for a five-pin on across-the-line start motors. The extra terminal is not used in this application. Part-winding O6D motors must use the six-pin terminal plate. All terminals are connected to power leads. An external thermostat must be used for motor overheat protection. Current production of O6E compressors is with six-post or nine-post terminal plates. The six-post terminal configuration is used for either across-the-line or part-winding start. External motor protection for over-amperage is required and over-temperature is optional and can be added. You can wire this terminal block up for across-the-line or part-winding start. Consult the wiring instructions on the inside of the terminal box cover. The most recent nine-post terminal plate configuration used on multi-voltage models is shown above. The low-voltage 208-230 volt winding can be wired for both across-the-line and part-winding starting. However, the 460-volt winding can only be wired for across-the-line starting. Discrete 460-volt models must be used for part-winding start applications. The O6E multi-voltage replacement compressor must be field-wired. The terminal plate jumper bar kit is used to connect the motor terminals. Carefully follow the instructions shipped with the replacement compressor and consult the wiring diagram located inside the terminal box. Carlisle has used a temperature sensor to monitor the discharge gas of all O6E refrigeration duty compressors. The sensor is installed in the discharge or center head on all six-cylinder, three-head models. The four-cylinder O6Es with two heads have the sensor in the left side head when looking from the oil pump end. All models of the O6CC compressors have the sensor located in the discharge or high stage head. When the discharge gas temperature in the cylinder head exceeds the sensor trip setting, the sensor will open the control circuit and shut off the compressor. When changing a sensor, note that it's threaded into the cylinder head without a well, so the compressor must be isolated and evacuated prior to servicing. Terminal plate removal and replacement. In this section, we're going to show you how to properly replace a terminal plate. There are two conditions for servicing a terminal plate. One, if there is a refrigerant leak between the terminal plate and the compressor, remove the plate assembly and replace the gasket. Plate may be removed as follows. Remove one of the valve stop cap screws. Swivel the valve stop to allow access to the hole from which the cap screw was removed. Reinsert the cap screw and tighten to break the seal. Tightening the valve stop cap screw lifts the valve plate from the compressor. All gasket material must be removed from the cylinder head, valve plate, and cylinder deck using a putty knife. Care should be taken not to let any of the old gasket material fall into the crankcase. Clean rags or paper towels may be stuffed into the ports during the gasket removal process to prevent particles from entering the compressor. Neoprene-coated steel gaskets should not be oiled when reinstalling. If the gasket is neoprene asbestos fiber, lightly oil it prior to installation. The parts should be installed in the following order. Valves, valve plate gasket, valve plate, cylinder head gasket, and finally the cylinder head. If installing a suction cutoff unloader valve plate gasket on an unloader equipped compressor, be sure to install the center web screw and washers to secure the gasket in place prior to installing the valve plate. Before the cylinder head and gasket are completely installed, check the movement of the suction valves with a pencil eraser. The valves should depress to the valve stop without restriction. If there is restriction, the valve plate gasket is probably misaligned. This situation should be corrected before continuing with the rest of the installation. After installing and tightening all the bolts evenly, Torque each bolt to 30 to 35 foot-pounds on O6D models 
and 90 to 100 foot-pounds for 06E compressors. When torquing the bolts, use an alternating sequence indicated in the above diagram. After an hour of running time, retorque the bolts. When working on 06CC compound cooling compressors, the procedure for reassembling the cylinder heads, valve plates, and manifolds must be carefully followed to assure proper alignment and to ensure against any leakage. Do not interchange high-stage valve plates with low-stage valve plates. High-stage valve plates have high and low-pressure crossover ports. Low-stage valve plates do not. First, looking from the oil pump end, replace the high-stage valve plate with crossover ports and cylinder head to the right bank. Torque to specifications. Next, replace the left bank valve plate. 50 to 99 CFM have a relief valve. And then replace the cylinder head and torque to the specified tolerance. Replace the top bank valve plate. 50 to 99 CFM have a plug and then replace the cylinder head. With all the cylinder head bolts loosely in place, finger tighten two opposing bolts. This assures easier alignment when installing the manifolds. Replace the suction manifold and interstage manifold tube assembly with new gaskets to the low stage banks. Torque the manifolds to the cylinder heads to specifications. Finally, Torque the top cylinder head to specified tolerance. Before leaving this section on removal and replacement of valve plates, you should be aware that on 06E and 06CC compressors, there is an internal pressure relief valve. It relieves high side pressure back to the suction side as required by safety codes. This valve is strictly a safety device and should never open under any normal operating conditions. The valve is set to relieve at a pressure differential. Another reason is, if any terminal is shorted to the terminal plate, replace the complete plate assembly using a new gasket. For our example, an 06E compressor has been chosen. A nine-post terminal kit for 06E will be used here. Both 06D and 06E repair kits are available. Note. The 06D compressor requires special tools and techniques and terminal plate replacements are not commonly done in the field. When working on or around a terminal plate, appropriate caution and safety measures should be followed to prevent personal injury. Danger. For safety reasons, always replace the complete terminal plate assembly. Do not remove the terminal posts and mix new and old parts to make one good one. This is an unsafe practice and could result in leaks or an explosion. In addition to the kit, you should have the right tools for the job. These include Allen and torque wrenches.